Welcome to Academic Game Tutorials. In this video, we will learn how an automotive air conditioning system works, along with the different parts and functions of different components of an automotive air conditioning system which is generally seen in our cars and vehicles. So, let's get into the topic. Before starting to discuss how it works, let's know what components or parts does an automotive air conditioning system have. First of all, here we have a compressor. After that detached to the compressor there is a condenser. After that detached to the condenser here we have a receiver. We can also call it a dryer. Then, connected to this receiver or dryer, there is an expansion valve. And after that, connected to this expansion valve here we have an evaporator where the refrigeration effect or the cooling effect takes place. This evaporator is again connected back to the compressor where we started. Thus a loop or a cycle is formed. Now that we know the parts and components that are available inside an automotive air conditioning system, let's discuss how each of these parts work so that the automotive air conditioning system functions properly. We know that, refrigeration is the process of lowering the temperature, by removing unwanted heat from a selected object, substance, or unenclosed space and transferring this heat to another object, substance, or space. The automotive air conditioning system we are discussing today, uses our 134A as the refrigerant. Previously our 12 was used as the refrigerant inside refrigeration systems which we also know as Freon, but this refrigerant R12 or Freon is a colorless and odorless CFC refrigerant that has unusually high potential to cause the depletion of the ozone layer covering our Earth's atmosphere. So, Replacing R12 we usually use our 134A as the refrigerant, though our 134A is not an ozone layer destroying agent like R12, our 134A has its own disadvantages, but yet because our 134A is more environment friendly than R12, we use our 134A as our refrigerant in air conditioning systems. So, to understand how the automotive air conditioning system works, Let's start with the detailed function of the evaporator. Very cold, chilled, low temperature liquid refrigerant coming out of the expansion valve enters into these evaporator coils through this connected pipe. We all know that the main cooling effect or refrigeration effect always occurs in the evaporator. So, when this low pressure, very cold, chilled, low temperature liquid refrigerant will enter the evaporator coils, it will absorb all the heat present in the surface of the evaporator coils. By absorbing all the heat from the surrounding region of the evaporator coils, this cold chilled liquid refrigerant will turn into low pressure refrigerant vapor inside these coils, and the surrounding surface of the evaporator will become cold by losing the heat to this liquid. In this case, the surrounding region of the evaporator is the interior of our car or the interior of our vehicle. So, the interior of our vehicle will become cold by losing the heat to this liquid refrigerant. Thus the cooling effect or refrigeration effect has occurred in the evaporator. Now, this hot low pressure vapor refrigerant will leave the evaporator after absorbing all surrounding heat, and enter the compressor through this connecting pipe. Now, this compressor starts working. The job of the compressor is to pressurize or compress the vapor refrigerant inside this compressor chamber. Now, we know that if pressure increases, it also increases the temperature. So, when, this vapor refrigerant is compressed inside the compressor chamber by squeezing the vapor very tightly together, it will heat up. After that, this high pressure and high temperature vapor refrigerant will leave the compressor and will enter into the condenser through this connected pipe. Here, we have a condenser. When high temperature high pressure vapor refrigerant enters this cold condenser, then the condenser absorbs the heat from the vapor refrigerant and completely converts it into liquid. This condenser can be water-cooled, air-cooled, or cooled by any other substance from an external source, which will liberate the latent heat of this vapor coming into the condenser, and thus condensing keeps happening. So, in easier words, condenser changes the incoming high-temperature high-pressure vapor refrigerant into liquid state by changing its phase. Here we had vapor coming in, and now we have liquid refrigerant going out. So the phase is changed. Now this high pressure high temperature liquid refrigerant will leave the condenser, but there is still some proportion of vapor and liquid mixture refrigerant present after condensation. So, 
we have to separate the remaining vapor or gaseous refrigerant from this condensed liquid refrigerant coming from the condenser, otherwise this remaining vapor refrigerants will circulate through the rest of the system and form residue inside it, that can damage the refrigeration system. So, the receiver or dryer over here will filter and separate the remaining moisture or vapor particles from the liquid refrigerant coming from the condenser, and passes only the liquid through this expansion valve or throttle valve using this connected pipe. Now, this high pressure liquid refrigerant coming from the condenser through the receiver will be expanded inside this expansion valve. We know that when expansion occurs, the pressure between the molecules decreases considerably, thus the temperature falls. So, this high pressure liquid refrigerant will be expanded into low pressure, low temperature liquid refrigerant. Thus, here we get a mixture of very cold, chilled, low temperature liquid refrigerant coming out of the expansion valve. Then, this liquid refrigerant will be again passed over to the evaporator though this connected pipe, where by absorbing all the heat from the surrounding region of the evaporator coils, this cold chilled liquid refrigerant will again turn into low pressure refrigerant vapor inside these coils, and the surrounding region of the evaporator which is actually the interior of our car or vehicle will become cold by losing the heat to this liquid, then this low pressure refrigerant vapor will leave the evaporator, and enter the compressor through this connecting pipe and the whole cycle will be repeated over and over again. Thus refrigeration or cooling will occur continuously in the evaporator region and we enjoy a good ride inside the car sitting in a cold air conditioned environment even in a hot sunny day. So, this is how an automotive air conditioning system works. Thank you for watching this video. If this video was helpful, subscribe to my channel Academic Game Tutorials for more updated videos.